Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. My name is WW Deadman, but you already know that. And we're gonna dive back into it. 60 Hi. seconds. Gordy. Yes. I, I need all the paperwork. I don't know where it is. I'm like lost without it. Who left this box at the top of the stairs? Uh, this is a fire hazard. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name's Cookie. How many people are playing the game? Just me. Oh, poor you. You don't have any friends today. Oh well, let's have your name. No. Hey player, wake the hell up and type your name in. Nope. Hey, does anybody smell smoke beside me? There should be three fire extinguishers. Okay then, fine. Let's just say you are going to lose. Get the contestants out of there. Get the contestants out of there. Wow. Yeah, are you here for a seven question tournament length game or a full 21 question deal? Yeah, got it. 30 seconds. Okay, your buzzer is the letter B as in Barnaby Jones. And you know something? I don't think I watched that show once in my whole life. Yo, man. What is that? Answer the pants are making it happen. 20 seconds. Is this a joke to you people? Whoa, heads up. All right, listen. When a question pops up, you got to buzz in. Then you pick your answer from the screen, and you have to hit the right key that corresponds to it on your keyboard. We know Follow that. Me. 10 seconds. Okay, I need everybody's Nine. attention. Let's lose Eight. the desktop. Okay, yeah, right. Seven. And go Six. to black. Five. Four. Three. Stand by. Shut Have a good show. Tuffies, where real people eat. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, all right, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Yo, tucked in. Then let's turn out the lights. Okay. How about it? We need a category. I'm gonna go with the chemistry cast question. Category is chemistry and teen angst, and this one's worth two thousand dollars. Plans are afoot to remake the '70s drama James at 15. Say the new James at 15 is about the trials and tribulations of the elements of the periodic table because of its atomic number. Which element should replace Lance Kerwin as James? Hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, or boron? That would be phosphorus. Phosphorus is number 15 on the periodic table. Hydrogen would be 1 and oxygen would be 16. Boron would be... Uh, 14? Or not? Okay, pick a category. I don't actually know. You snooze, I choose. And this question's category is 10 or 12 more burgers, Mr. Pavarotti. Oh. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Hang on tight, because here we go. Luciano Pavarotti is singing a moving rendition of Don Giovanni when all of a sudden he modulates. What happens? He loses his voice, he changes keys, he soils himself, or he starts singing a different opera. He changes key. A modulation is a key change. Where are my keys? 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 No, Luciano, the other kind of key change. Oh. <laughs> All right, go ahead and pick one. <laughs> Question three. Category. Kiss with more tongue. This might be a hard one. Three grand. Remember that guy from the rock band Kiss with a very long tongue? Yep. If rock star Gene Simmons wanted to form a new group named for an insect also noted for its relatively long tongue, which insect would be the best choice for the band's name? The wasps, the bumblebees, the earthworms, or the beetles? Long tongue. Uh, 
I'm gonna go with the bumblebee for having very long, like... Bumblebee tongues rule. <laughs> Their shows are also a great place to cop a good buzz. They actually have pretty long, like... Say? Mouth parts, but... That's not really a tongue, just saying. The light sounds of question four. This one's gonna be... Sailors wear the craziest things. Pay attention, three grand on this one. Get your fingers ready, here's one coming at ya. If Don Knotts were sailing at the speed of one knot for an entire 30-minute episode of Three's Company, how far would he have traveled by the end of the show? One half of a nautical mile, three nautical miles, 30 nautical miles, or nowhere? I'm gonna go ahead and guess that because I have absolutely no idea what one knot is. Traveling at the speed of one knot will get you one nautical mile in an hour, so a 30 minute episode will get down only a half a mile. Good. Of course, when I Mr. at least Curly said I'm heading to sea, Janet thought he had said I'm betting Chrissy, and hilarious hijinks ensued. Okay. At least I was right about the assumption that one knot uh, will bring you one nautical mile in an hour. Um, however, I still have no idea how fast one knot is because I have no idea how far a nautical mile is. Get two thousand bucks. Hey, uh, have you ever heard of the pro wrestler Jake the Snake Roberts? Yeah. Well, uh, let's pretend Jake the Snake has a tail with a rattle. If it were formed just like a rattlesnake's tail forms, of what would Jake's rattle be made? Dried skin from his buttocks, bone protruding from the skin, matted butt cheek hair, or rolled up adhesive tape. <laughs> Dried up skin. Rattlesnakes slough off their dead skin periodically, and it builds up into their rattle. Jake should have never stopped using that Nivea. Okay, pick a category. <sighs> This category is... Also, tastes great on burgers. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, hang tight, put your fingers on your buzzers, here's the question. Which of the following is not a real hair care product? Pantene Pro-V, Aussie Hair Salad, Henan Placenta, or Hansen's Raspberry Plasma? Uh. Nope, that's real, and just like a snake's rattle, it's not made from Jake the Snake's matted butt cheek hair. <laughs> Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. Uh. Hansen's Raspberry Plasma. The healthy, natural body of a raspberry shampoo with that refreshing tingle of human plasma. How about it? We need a category. The 7 o'clock news with question 7. And we call this one Moans and Bones. Two G's for a right answer. All Just right, saying the only... Because here comes the question. The only uh, shampoo I actually knew off of that uh, freaking list was Pentine Pro-V. If grandma wanted to improve her bone strength by increasing the amount of vitamin D in her system, which of the following is the best way to increase her vitamin D without changing her diet? Sleep under an afghan of pure alfalfa, crawl inside the carcass of a saltwater fish, expose her skin to the sun at a nudist colony, or bathe in a tub of cod liver oil. Vitamin D is the only vitamin that we can produce ourselves, and that photosynthetically. Human skin converts the ultraviolet rays of the sun into vitamin D. <laughs> Seeing grandma naked converts the nudist colony into a lost colony. Hey, get back here! Where did everybody go? Alright, go ahead and pick one. Um... Okay, coming up, this category is history. It happens every day. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, take a good look at this picture and tell me which of these best describes this mock historic moment. FDRNR, Yeltis Falcons, Big Three Stooges, or the Marxist Brothers? 
I'm gonna go with the Marxist bro brothers. Here's Oops. what you should have picked. Big Three Stooges! I think the trouble started when Stalin kept calling Churchill Porcupine throughout the proceedings. Take your pick, what do you say? Pope Fiction! That's, that's cute. Oh, uh, some, somebody just handed me a piece of paper with the Pope's name on it in Rome. Come on, it's a joke. All right, <laughs> we're, we're making a celebrity collect call to the head of the Catholic Church. What? Uh, I'm, I'm calling the Pope. Uh, right, uh, Wait, who was Pope back when that game came out? Okay, uh, I, I am now dialing the Pope. Schmidt told me that, uh, that his people called him that, that he, uh, he loves a gibberish. It's <laughs> cool. All right. Buongiorno. You reached the Vatican City voicemail system. If you would like to talk to the Pope, press one. If you would like to report a miracle, All right, press um, two. Helen, was he expecting this phone call? Yeah, uh, uh, stand, stand uh, by. We're standing, well, I, but that's uh, all right. Sorry, folks. I thought we were gonna talk to the Pope. Let's uh, let's go on to the next category. Okay, pick a category. Uh, I'm gonna... I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where that goes. Uh-oh, chess but No! It's time for... Here's a gibberish category. Satanic activism and Winnie the Pooh. The opening value is $5,000. You got 30 seconds for this, and I'm taking away the prize money a little at a time, so buzz in as soon as you know it. Here we go with what famous phrase does this rhyme? Free hells, three bells, fry the Eeyore, and uh, don't be tripped up by the punctuation. First clue, it's a tongue twister. I know what you're thinking, stop it. It's a tongue twister with a lot of S sounds in it. See, shells? Okay, hit number three, it's about a woman selling shells. Three hells, three bells, fry the Eeyore. She, she sells seashells by the seashore, okay. I don't suppose there's a real demand for seashells down by the shore, though. She really ought to try more urban areas. Come on, we need a category. Um... Alright, next up. Desert winds and barren mines. 2,000 bucks for a right answer. Imagine that in a bold admission that Hollywood has run out of new ideas, filming has begun on a wacky romantic comedy homage to Casablanca. Assuming the filmmakers keep the film set in Casablanca, which of these could be a factually accurate title for this remake? Egypt Bites, Sleepless in Sudan, The Truth About Tunisia, or While You Were in Morocco? I think Morocco. Casablanca is in Morocco. Play it, Sam. Then put it on a shoddy but lucrative soundtrack album. Well, round one is done. Let's dive into round two. Now remember, round two means double the value of the questions, which means more cash won or more cash lost. Let's go. How about it? We need a category. It's 11 minus 1 plus 2 minus 1. It's 11. The category, Vulcans and Vacuums. This one's worth $4,001 bills. Imagine the following scene from an episode of Star Trek, The Voyage to Insanity. Shouting logic this, you pointy-eared bastard, Dr. McCoy goes nuts and jettisons his Vulcan crewmate into outer space. What will happen to Spock first if he's not wearing any protective gear? He'll freeze to death, his blood will vaporize, his head will explode, or he'll choke to death. He'll choke to death. Wait. Yeah. He won't choke, but you just did. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. The sud- BULLSHIT! COMPLETE OTHER BULLSHIT! 
yes, your uh, any any uh, little bit of uh, saliva, sweat, tears, and everything outside your body will definitely vaporize instantly. Yes, your blood will not. Your pl blood is pressurized inside your veins and the arteries. There is no way that will vaporize instantly. There have been people exposed to the vacuum of space. They didn't have vaporized blood. Ah, scientific bullshit. The drop in pressure would make Spock's blood boil and vaporize. No, cause he wouldn't have a, a pressure loss on his blood. Ah, okay, you don't know Jack. Failing in science since 1990. When came that out? Twelve. Celebrity voice impersonated. Category. Let's do it. What the hell are you doing with those calipers? This one's worth six grand. All right, my favorite. It's a question about genitals. Not that it matters or anything, but which of these primates has the biggest testicles? Humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, or gibbons? I have absolutely no idea, and I have. Absolutely no interest in knowing. I'm just gonna guess Gibbons. No, but Gibbons definitely have the most fun name to say. Gibbon. Come on, say it with me. Come on. Gibbon. 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 Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. <laughs> Chimpanzee males all mate with a female in estrus. In an effort to outshoot the competition, they have developed enormous testicles. And they look really silly in Speedos. Pick. What do you say? Um. I love 13 number 13. Uh -huh. The category is just say yes to kitchen safety. Pop a right answer, you got 4K. It's time to fill in the blank. Limber up those fingers. When you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. If the main body of the state of Michigan were a giant oven mitt, which body of water could most easily extinguish its burning thumb? Michigan Lake. Go nuts. Type in your answer and hit... Adios. Shalom. Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. Lake Huron surrounds the thumb of Michigan, but if Michigan's thumb is burning really bad, it should just stick it up in Canada for a while to cool it off. <gasps> Come on, we need a category. Don't ask me American geography. That's like asking uh, an American any other ge geography than America. The category is country and western and modern literature. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. By combining the name of a popular John Irving book with a famous country and western singer, which catchy title can you create for an unauthorized biography? The World According to Garth, The Tale of Two Judds, Who's Afraid of Reba McIntyre, or Clint Black Beauty? Uh... I have absolutely no idea. Because I don't know any famous country or western singers. Shoulda picked this. John Irving wrote The World According to Garth, but your version would be a steamy expose on Garth Brooks. Also, I don't know John Irving. write it. How about it? We need a category. Um. Category. Why, that's a trip of a different color. We got four grand on the table. Imagine that after spending a few dull weeks back in Kansas with Auntie M and Uncle Henry, Dorothy decides to hitch a ride on a twister back to the land of Oz. Based on its average number of tornadoes per year, in which state would Dorothy have the best chance of catching a ride? Texas, Florida, Oklahoma, or Kansas? I think Texas has the most. With an average of over a hundred twisters per year, Dorothy's best bet is to go to Texas. It'll be nice for her to see more of the U.S., and she has a great excuse for hanging around in trailer parks. 
Okay, pick a category. <sighs> Excellent choice. It's time to play this or that. Here's a category for this this or dat. The International Funny Pages. All right, I'm gonna read off seven items, and for each one, I need you to tell me if it's the name of a comic strip character or an ethnic dish. So as each one comes up, if it's a comic strip character, press one. If it's an ethnic dish, press two. And to skip it, press four. At least not both. Thousand dollars for each right answer, and a thousand off for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. Okay, give me thirty seconds on the clock. Let's dance. Agus, comic strip character. Funky Winkerbean. Musaka. Hagar. Schroeder. Marmaduke. Ah. Last one. Sukiya. That's all she wrote. Six right, one wrong. Nothing to shake. Yeah, and the one wrong was just there you go. pressing right, the wrong button. On. All right, go ahead and pick one. This one's gonna be Uriah's Heat. Get this right, you're bringing home 6K. The British have always had a knack for discussing life's unpleasantries in a proper and distinguished manner. Which of the following was a popular 18th century British euphemism for referring to human excrement? Sir Reverence, the royal duty, your mountship, or his majesty? I'm pretty sure it's the royal duty. This answer stinks like royal duty. Too bad you didn't pick this. Watch yourself, me lady. Do not step into that pile of, uh, Sir Reverence. Hmm, and I guess those must be the crown jewels. Nope, just some corn. Okay, British slang. Always has been weird, always will be weird, I guess. Um... Category is three is a magic number, and this one's worth two thousand dollars. Check this out. Which of these groups actually has three members? The Three Musketeers, Three Dog Night, the Three Stooges, or the Three Amigos? There were six Stooges, seven counting you. And over here we have the right answer. <laughs> Once, twice, three times, an amigo. I like the three amigos and a baby a lot better though. It, it was so hard. Didn't know any of them, really. I mean, I knew that the three musketeers had four people. At least. Oh, choosing is so difficult. No, it's not. Like a bad This category is literary reviews for the feeble-minded. We are talking four big ones. Okay, listen up. Imagine this literature review done by a very feeble-minded individual. Okay, this guy really hates his boss, okay? So he makes the boss think his wife's playing around on him, right? Then the boss strangles his wife and gets really bummed out. What's the play? Macbeth, Julius Caesar, Othello, or Cats? Pure guess. Othello's underling, Iago, gets him to wig out and strangle his wife. I wonder if that's the object in that Othello board game. Alright, go ahead and pick one. The Fresh Saver. 20. And this question's category is the universal language. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Okay, eyes forward. Which of the following correctly completes this poem? To get a glass of agua, I could go to Nicaragua. But if I wanted, oh, it's off the blank, I'd go. Guam, France, Greece, or Uzbekistan? I'd say France. Oh, yes. 
But make sure it's bottled though, or you'll be spending most of your visit in the water closet. How about it? We need a category. All of these look very, very bad. Time for the attack. Soon as you see two words on the screen that match, hit your buzzer. Two thousand bucks if you're right, two thousand off if you're wrong. But do not forget, not just any match works. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Let's get Freudian. Super. All right, away we e go. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you can. Oh, okay. I guess you can say that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> Obviously key. Train or car. Plug. What do you call that? You've got it down to a science, hey? Eh? Let's see how it brought up your score. That's the game. At least probably to positive. Oh, good. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Let's roll the commercials and, um, a Cookie, what's happening with the players? Okay, okay, you got on the high scoreboard. That's fine, but I want to tell you something. If I wanted to, I could demolish your measly little score, but I, I've got work to do. Yeah. Of which, uh, if you want to play again, just let me know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you know next week. Till then, I'd say like and favorite if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and until next time, I'm WW Deadman. Before you go to bed, spread a handful of the free but flavor crystals on your tushy. Let it set for a few minutes, add water, and go to sleep. And then let free but